In the near future, society had evolved in ways that once seemed unimaginable. Among these advancements was the creation of the Academy of New Horizons, a unique institution that represented the pinnacle of transformative technology. I found myself at the gates of this academy not out of choice but necessity. My story, like many others, was one of being chosen for a program that promised a new identity, a new life. I was 18 when the letter arrived. It was sleek, with a holographic seal, indicating that my application, submitted by my guardians without my knowledge, had been accepted. The Academy of New Horizons specialized in something revolutionary, the complete gender transformation of young individuals. The process was not merely cosmetic or superficial, it was a profound change that affected the body and mind, facilitated by advanced technology and psychological conditioning. My future, as I had imagined it, was about to change drastically. Upon arrival, the enormity of what was about to happen began to sink in. The academy was a sprawling complex, equipped with the latest in medical and educational technology. My initial resistance and fear were met with understanding but firm reassurances from the staff. They spoke of a future where my external self aligned perfectly with a new internal identity, one that they assured me would bring harmony and happiness. The curriculum was unlike anything I had encountered. It combined traditional learning with specialized classes designed to prepare us for our transformation. There were courses on femininity, psychology, and the social roles of women in society. Each class was designed to not only educate but also to reshape our thinking and perceptions. The transformation process was gradual. It began with hormone treatments, followed by a series of surgeries that were both bewildering and miraculous. The Academy's technology ensured that these changes were not just effective but also safe. With each passing day, I could see and feel the changes. My reflection began to align with the person the Academy promised I would become. But the transformation was not just physical. The Academy's psychological conditioning techniques were subtle yet profound. Through virtual reality simulations and immersive experiences, my mind began to accept and embrace my new identity. Memories of my past life remained, but they felt like they belonged to someone else, a distant relative I once knew well. The most astonishing aspect of the Academy's program was the legal and social integration process. Upon completion of the program, our identities were legally changed. Our pasts were meticulously reconstructed, even our birth certificates reflected our new gender. The government's database was updated, ensuring that all official documents and records corresponded to our new identities. It was as if we had always been the gender we transitioned to. Perhaps the most challenging aspect of the transformation was the adjustment of memories among those we knew. Through a combination of technology and psychological techniques, the Academy ensured that our families and friends remembered us only as our new selves. This process, while controversial, was a testament to the length society was willing to go to ensure complete integration and acceptance. As I graduated from the Academy of New Horizons, I stepped into the world as a new person. My journey had been one of transformation, not just of gender, but of self. The person who had entered the academy, full of fear and uncertainty, was no more. In its place stood someone confident and ready to embrace a future that, just a few short years ago, would have seemed like a distant dream. The Academy of New Horizons was more than just a school, it was a gateway to a new life. It represented the pinnacle of what society could achieve when technology and compassion converged. My story, like that of my classmates, was a testament to the human spirit's ability to evolve and embrace new horizons.